he gives us his all. Speed, endurance, power. Yet his wild spirit burns bright. Spark of ancient myth. Pride of king and conqueror. He was the backbone of civilization. History was forged to the beat of his hooves. Even now, he still lays claim to the heart with all the bold beauty that is the horse. Summer sets off fireworks in the mountains of southern Montana. Spurred by heat and hunger, wild horses converge on the cool green heights, and sparks begin to fly. Stallions spar and court young mares in a drama as old as the hills. The Mustang has become a symbol of the American West. But some say he's a newcomer to these parts, even a trespasser. The truth is tangled in the long and winding history of his kind. It began some 60 million years ago in the forest of North America. Living on leaves, a creature the size of a fox walks the underbrush on padded toes. In time, forests give way to grassy plains. Legs grow long and toes become nimble hooves in a body built for speed. About a million years ago, the first true horses spread across land bridges to Asia and Europe. Their numbers swell, then slowly decline, perhaps due to climate change or the impact of a two-legged predator. To Ice Age hunters, the herds must have seemed inexhaustible. But by 8,000 years ago, horses were extinct in the Americas and dwindling elsewhere into memory and myth. Then somewhere on the steppes of Eurasia, at least 4,000 years ago, the horse inspired someone as more than just a meal. It may have begun as a shaman's ritual or a reckless teenage prank, but some brave soul took a quantum leap and changed the world forever. The horse utterly changed our sense of distance and speed. He carried us forward in space and time and made our world smaller. Great equestrian cultures arose and thundered across antiquity. Today, most have vanished, but here on the steppes of Mongolia, little has changed since the time when the horse became a way of life. Nomads still measure their wealth in livestock and move vast herds with the seasons. Small but hardy, Mongolian horses endure a harsh climate and grow a thick winter coat. When pasture is meager, 
They can survive on very little. Mongolian nomads also herd sheep, goats, and cows, but horses are their greatest pride. Revered, they are largely reserved for riding and one other important role. Mongolia's national drink, called Iraq, is fermented mare's milk. Life in the saddle begins early, in keeping with a local proverb. A Mongolian without a horse is like a bird without wings. In July, thousands of nomads set up camp on the edge of the capital city, Ulan Bator. They come to celebrate Nadam, an ancient religious festival. National competitions of traditional sports are held, including two days of horse racing. One of the country's top horse breeders, Hang Medic, traveled over a week to take part in what will be his 30th Natum. From a herd of 400 head, he has brought his 12 fastest horses. Also in tow are his grandchildren, for good reason. Riders must be under 12 to compete at Nadam. Training, however, is no child's play. It's what Hang Medic lives for. Horse training is a passion. My father was a great trainer, and he passed that on to me. It's the same for most Mongolian people. We compete at Nadam to see who has the best horse, and because we're so proud of our horses. A fine racehorse is a symbol of good luck and happiness. On the day of the first race, preparations begin at dawn. Hats and bright silks will help families spot their little jockeys at a distance. The distinguishing mark of a racehorse is a leather tail wrap, always wound clockwise. Forelocks are also bound. Hang Medic enhances the look with a charm bearing Mongolia's national emblem. He has high hopes for this young stallion. With an offering of mare's milk, Hang Medic's wife invokes the sacred powers of nature to bless horses and riders. A circle of